started? Um, I mean, there's loads, there's lots of obstacles when you just start, and nobody knew who I was, so that was an obstacle. Uh, especially, you know, particularly for myself, I had a lot of self doubt. It was actually my older brother who, who forced me to start, pretty much. Um, and he was basically because I'd done coaching in, in so when I was at Quincy University and I was the assistant coach. Because I was already coaching the guys there, I was staying behind after training sessions and I was saying to the guys, listen, if you want to do some extra work, like I'll do some. So sometimes one guy would stay, maybe some Sundays three or four guys would stay and I'd end up doing some sort of small group specific, position specific stuff for them. Um, because I seen, when I was in America, I seen that for, for basketball, for American football, for baseball, individualized training was like, was the norm. It was a normal thing to do. It was a standard procedure. And it was, it was never like that for football. So, so, I was, so when I was in America, I thought, why, why, is it, why, do the, why is it such a common thing? And it's, it's so normal just to get individualized training for baseball, basketball, American football. But in football it, or in soccer in America, it, it wasn't a normal thing. So I thought, I'll just start offering it to the guys who are already coaching. So I started staying behind doing a lot of coaching and, and I loved it, really enjoyed it. So when I come home, I was still trying to play professional football, but I was also, um, because I didn't have any money, I was working in a factory. So I was working from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. in a factory. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the OK Magazine. Are you familiar with the OK Magazine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't read it, but I, I was the one who was organising it. Um, so I basically, I was just picking the magazines up from here, putting them here, and I was doing that for 12 hours in a factory so I was miserable and I, I was wondering what value I could provide I'd just gone from being on a high in America of being the captain of every team close to being a professional footy player in the USL um, mm -hmm. I'd won you know the, the PDL I think it's called something different nowadays but I won the, the PDL championship national championship in the summer three times in four years um, and so I was just coming from a high there and all of a sudden I'm in a factory on minimum wage, like surrounded by people who are probably still there right now. Um, and I was in a bad place. So my older brother was like, listen, what else are you going to do? Like, you need to do something. So he really, I was just, and I had a lot of self-doubt around people. The parents in the UK won't pay for it. Um, who am I to train anybody? Why would someone going to believe in me? Um, you know, I'm not a, a, a UEFA A coach. I haven't been in Liverpool for seven years or actually in including my time away at Preston. That's probably nine years, nine years away from Liverpool. So I'm like, nobody knows me. Just all this self-doubt and all these limiting beliefs that I was creating in my own mind is why it wasn't going to work. And, mm -hmm. and then eventually it, it, I got to a point of desperation because I wasn't in a good place in the factory uh, for obvious reasons. And so I just said, you know what? My older brother was like, listen, you'll be great at it. And I think, you know, because he, he knew the me enthusiasm, he knew my passion for football, he knew my communication skills. And so he saw those things in me be before I saw them in me and before anybody else saw them in me. Um, so I'm forever grateful for him. And then from there, I I did my first session and then and then and then that was it. Um so so that was an obstacle for me. It was like nobody knows me. I had to try, you know, I had to get myself out there into the scene of people who've got all the badges in the world, done all the courses in the world, and then all of a sudden it's like, who's this new guy on the block? This Tom Owens. Why should we go to him? Why should we believe in him? So that was an obstacle, and um, and I mean, I could I could go on for two hours talking to you about obstacles. I mean, <laughs> there, 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 there's there's it's even today there's I could I could name ten obstacles that I've got today. They, they, they're never going to end, you know. But the challenge is just to make sure that the problems that you've got. My problems are getting juicier and they're getting bigger. And as long as the as long as my problems are getting bigger, then I, I know that I'm growing and I know that I'm in good shape.